Welcome to Christian Virtual Fellowship, the online church of allegiance to the King. Christian Virtual Fellowship is an online church home for isolated biblical Unitarians. We gather twice a week and even more to praise God and Jesus, to pray together, to grow in God's word and to strengthen and encourage one another. We're glad you found our channel and we invite you to check out our website at a2kchurch.org where you can contact us if you'd like to come and visit our church online. We're continuing with the study of the book of Judges. The book of Judges is about a nation, the nation of Israel, without a strong leader. And as you can see on the screen, Israel had a repeated cycle of sin, of experiencing war and slavery, of crying out to God in repentance, of God raising up a judge to deliver Israel, and then finally achieving peace. And most of the time during this approximately 400 year period, the nation of Israel had peace, but there were significant times when they did not, and that's because of their lack of faithfulness at that time. So God wanted, wanted to be their king, but the Israelites were distracted and won over by the religions of the pagan people who lived among them. Without a strong national leader, every person did what was right in their own eyes, leading Israel to idolatry and chaos. And then this chart uh, illustrates that cycle. Now this is a this is continuing with a uh, a series, and we are now in part six. And just for a brief overview of what we've gone through so far, I want to offer you. There's chapters one and two, which was simply kind of a general overview of the whole book, and then chapters three through twelve showed a ever downward spiritual and moral spiral because of idolatry resulting the resulting oppression repentance and deliverance by god through historic if flawed judges and then chapters 13 to 16 there's the uh, record of samson who is a historic figure but is also symbolizes Israel's obsessive idolatry, captivity, and deliverance. It's, it's, it's focus. Chapter 17 does not mention any oppression or repentance, only the idolatry of a man named Micah and how that idolatry was adopted by an unnamed Levite. In chapter 18, the following chapter, the tribe of Dan is brought into the lives of Micah and the priest, revealing the tribe's own idolatry, and it also revealed uh, eventually the Levite priest's name and famous ancestor, So an overview of chapters 17 to 21 might be appropriate because there is the phrase, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And that's cited both in the first chapter we're going to cover, 17 verse 6, and also in the very last verse of the book, Judges 21 to 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. People were left to do just whatever they thought was right at the time. Now, there is a figure of speech called inclusio, where when a writer uses the same phrase twice, it might be considered two bookends, and which kind of frame 
uh, the story that's within the two verses of Scripture. In this case, Judges 17, 6 and 21, 25. And unlike the rest of the book, there are no judges. There is no oppression. There's just this malaise and later on some horrifying uh, record that we'll get into next month. So this might be considered a, a uh, an entire section in and of itself, uh, chapter 17 to 21. And what's interesting about this phrase, everyone did what was right in his own eyes, is that it's an echo of what Samson said to his parents when they questioned him about taking a Philistine woman for his wife in uh, chapter 14, uh, 3. She was right in my eye. In other words, it was kind of up to him. He didn't have to refer to God's will or God's word or the instruction, the commandment not to marry outside of the nation of Israel. He just kind of put that off. She, this Philistine woman, was right in my eye. So chapter 17 and 18 are the first subsection of the five chapters the last five chapters of the book. They deal with idolatry, first with a man and his Levite, so-called priest, and then with the tribe of Dan, which had not taken any territory due to their own idolatry. And we'll get into the details of that. The second subsection, chapters 19 and 21, or 19 through 21, deal with a horrific crime followed by a demand for justice, and then a civil war between the tribes of Israel. All of it smacking of an absence of God's presence, of self-righteousness, willful sin, and the resulting death and destruction. So in these two subsections of five chapters, there are no judges, no good guys, little mention of God, and little, if any, justice. So now we'll, we'll get started with chapter 17. Now there was a man of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said to his mother, the 1,100 pieces of silver that were taken from you, about which you uttered a curse and also spoke it in my hearing, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. So he's confessing that he stole his mother's savings. Now, this is how we are introduced to Mr. Micah, is that he took 1,100 pieces of silver, but he only confessed it because he had heard in his hearing that she had uttered a curse, and he was afraid of that curse. So behold, he, he exclaimed, the silver is with me. And then he confesses, I took it. Now, the mother doesn't want her own son to be cursed. And so she says, blessed be my son by the Lord. And the word Lord is in all capital letters, which tells us that it's the word Yahweh, the proper name for Almighty God. He then returned the 1,100 pieces of silver to his mother, and his mother said, I wholly consecrate, consecrate the silver from my hand to the Lord, to Yahweh, for my son to make a carved image and a cast metal image. So now I will return them to you. So in her uh, maternal wanting to protect her son from the curse, she offers him a carved image and a cast metal image as something, as some sort of good luck charm or some sort of thing to worship. And this is quite amazing because, as you probably know, of the Ten Commandments, there's a commandment not to be worshiping or having carved images or cast metal images. So this is a direct violation. Here this mother is referring to the Lord, to Yahweh, and yet is completely either ignorant 
or ambivalent about that commandment. Verse 4, so when he returned the silver to his mother, his mother took 200 pieces of silver and gave them to the silversmith, who made them into a carved image and a cast metal image, and they were in the house of Micah. Micah. And the man Micah had a shrine. Well, this is very religious. He must be a very religious person. He's uh, afraid of curses, and, his, and now he has a shrine in his home. And he made an ephod, which is, is an apron that a priest would wear, and household idols, and consecrated one of his sons so that he might become his priest. Well, that's really very religious, but, you know, I think that it said already, we've been told that the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle and the high priest were all located in a town called Shiloh at this time. Now, now uh, King David hadn't come about yet. This is early on. And so it's King David that brings the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. So, but this is years and years before. And what would, what do we have here? We have someone making up his own religious center and consecrating one of his boys to be his priest. That's really something. In verse 6, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And then, as I mentioned before, Samson had told his parents that the Philistine woman that he wanted to marry, was she was right in his eyes. So it's a kind of an echoing theme there. Verse 7, now there was a young man from Bethlehem in Judah, of the house of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he was staying there. Then the man left the city Bethlehem in Judah to stay wherever he would find a place. And as he made his journey, he came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the Levites, because this man is a Levite. The Levites were a tribe and a part of the tribe had been designated by God to be the priests of Israel. All of the Levites were not given territory of their own. Okay, could you mute your, your, uh, yourself, please? The law allowed them to live in designated cities throughout Israel, and if led by God, to settle elsewhere. The young man had left his previous home in Bethlehem and is traveling around looking for some new place to live. But while he is a Levite, there is no reason given to think he was a priest. Well, let's look at, into that a little bit. Now, there's the tribe of Levi, and here I've given you a diagram. And Levi, of course, was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, and he had three sons, Gershom, Kohath, and Merah, Merari. And then Kohath had two sons, Aaron and Moses. And it's from the line of Aaron that the priests were uh, drawn from. It's God instructed the nation of Israel to have their priests from the line or house of Aaron, not from the house of Moses. Moses had.